let us now talk about the conditions which are required for growth. Let us uh, write down the list of those things or those conditions first and then we'll see how these conditions play an important role. First, oxygen, then water, which is essential for growth, nutrients, and in these nutrients, we are basically talking of the minerals which are required. Optimum temperature, and phytohormones. These are the main conditions which are there. Now let us see what exactly we mean and how these conditions are required. Oxygen is required for aerobic respiration and this aerobic respiration is the process which releases ATP which is essential for various growth activities or growth uh, processes. Water which is required for growth is needed to provide turgidity. The cell will absorb water, will become turgid and due to this turgidity the vacuole enlargement takes place and that results in the growth of the cell. We have talked about the root structure and we said that the, the, at the tip there are meristematic cells. These cells when they come into the next zone, that zone is known as zone of elongation. And elongation is basically due to enlargement of the vacuole which takes place due to absorption of water. So first water gets absorbed. The cell becomes sturgid and there is vacuolar elongation and that elongated vacuole helps in cell growth or increase in size. Nutrients when we talk of, we are talking of two categories of nutrients, micronutrients and macronutrients and both of these they are required for synthesis of protoplasm. So for protoplasm synthesis, both micro and macronutrients or elements are essential. Optimum temperature and as we have seen in the chapter of photosynthesis that C3 plants require a different temperature for uh, photosynthesis to take place or the optimum temperature is different in C3 and C4 plants. So depending upon the plant that optimum temperature is essential because it is going to help in optimum enzymatic activities. So this is for optimum enzyme activity. And the next condition or uh, the things which are required are uh, phytohormones. These are actually plant growth regulators. We will be discussing these phytohormones in detail but these plant, plant growth regulators or phytohormones they are divided into two uh, categories. One which are growth promoters and the other ones which are growth inhibitors. So we will take these in detail and all phytohormones also. The next condition which is essential for growth is light. And unless and until light is present, the plants will not be able to perform photosynthesis. And if there is no photosynthesis, no carbohydrates will be synthesized. So this is for photosynthesis. So very, very essential factor for plant growth. So oxygen for ATP generation, water, uh, one, it is raw material for photosynthesis as well as it provides turgidity, vacuolar elongation takes place due to this and cell growth. So for water we can also write one more that it is a raw material for 
photosynthesis and photosynthesis is essential for the plant growth. Nutrients both micro and macro which help in protoplasm synthesis, optimum temperature for enzymatic activity to take place properly, phytohormones which are the growth regulators and we will study this in detail all phytohormones how they have been derived where they are produced and their functions and light the details of light we have already studied in the chapter of photosynthesis but this is also very very essential for the plant growth because plants they synthesize their own food and that food is essential for their growth so these are the conditions which are required for growth now let us talk about one more important uh, thing which is called differentiation the plant grows or plant cell grows it divides it grows and then it gets differentiated so let us talk about the differentiation process now so differentiation is a process in which the cell which is synthesized and it has grown to its full size now becomes uh, specialized for a particular function. Let us understand what is happening. Suppose this is a small cell. This undergoes division to form two daughter cells because here we are talking of mitotic divisions only. These daughter cells will become large. They would undergo enlargement and we just now saw that water plays a very important role in this enlargement. And now these cells, they become specialized for a particular function. Specialized for a function. And this process is known as differenti differentiation. So now these two specialized cells, they could become either parenchymatous cells, sclerenchymatous cells or any kind of cell depending upon the requirement of the plant. The same thing can also be understood from uh, the simple cell cycle. When we talk of cell cycle, we say that there are all these phases. This is G1, then S and G2 phase. And then there is M phase, which is the division phase. And starting from this up to G2, this is also known as interface. What is happening during this interface is the preparation. So if we say that one cell gets into the cell cycle, it will go through G1 phase, then S, G2, and here it will divide. So when it comes to this end of M phase, we would get two daughter cells. And after they have grown, these cells, they come out of the cell cycle and go into G0 phase. Or in this G0, that means they come out of the cycle, they would not divide anymore. These cells, they get specialized. That means now the cell gets differentiated. To understand the same process, we will take one more example and that is of parenchyma. Parenchyma cells, in case of uh, plants, suppose this cell is the two daughter cells which are formed, they become parenchyma cells. And we know parenchyma cells are specialized to perform various functions. It can be temporary storage, it can be in the form of aerenchyma, or it can be in the form of chlorenchyma where they would perform photosynthesis. Now, I'm just drawing a small part. This is, these are the vascular bundles in case of a dicot stem. So these are vascular bundles of dicot stem and we know outside is fluid inner is xylem and this these lines which are drawn here this is the cambium this cambium is known as fascicular 
muscular cambium or even the vascular. This is the lateral cambium. Now when this plant has to undergo secondary growth, then what is going to happen? To understand this, let us draw some cells here. These are parenchyma cells, but because they are present in between these vascular bundles, they get little compressed, they get squeezed, and they look little elongated. And we call this as medullary rays. And these cells actually are parenchyma cells. And that is what we said, we start with this parenchyma as uh, our example. So now, because they are parenchymatous, that means they underwent this cell cycle, came out of the cell cycle, became specialized. So how is parenchyma formed? It is formed by the process of differentiation. So due to differentiation, what we get is parenchyma. Now, so suppose I write here parenchyma. What is this process actually? It is coming out and let me put number one here. This is differentiation. What is happening here is specialization. And in this particular part, this much process has taken place. The cell divided, came out of the cycle, got specialized. That process is known as differentiation. Now, when secondary growth has to take place, these parenchymatous cells between this band, they would again become meristematic. Meristematic means they would start to develop. So this parenchyma cell, which was differentiated, comes back into the cycle and would again divide. This process is number two process. So this is one. It would be called, coming back to the original, it is called the differentiation. After again becoming meristematic, that means it is again coming back into the cell cycle, would divide to produce secondary phloem on the outer side and secondary xylem on the inner side. This is taking place during secondary growth. Now once the secondary growth is over, that means secondary phloem, secondary xylem is formed. Now this parenchymatous cells which came into the cycle would again become specialized and will come out of the cycle. That means it will not divide again. That process would be process number three. That means it will again become specialized for a particular function. We will call it redifferentiation. Differentiation. So basically what exactly we are trying to understand by using these three terms, first is differentiation. That means a cell gets specialized. A cell gets specialized. We call this process differentiation. The cell again comes into this meristematic stage. You call it the differentiation and after dividing for some time it again becomes specialized we call it redifferentiation so these three processes can be easily understood if we talk of this parenchymatous cells so plant cells they divide then they grow and they become differentiated now in this uh, complete process we will talk about one more term and that is known as plasticity. In case of plants like coriander, larkspur, etc. We find that they show heterophily. They show heterophily. Heterophily means having different types of leaves during different life period. That means when a plant grows, 
They have seen coriander leaves. Young coriander plant, the shape of the leaf is different. And when the same coriander plant turns old, the leaves, they undergo further incisions and their shapes are different. This is called heterophily. So what exactly we mean by plasticity is these plants respond to external stimuli by showing different structures at different time of life period. So young plant would show a particular shape of the leaf, old plant would have a different leaf and they are responding to the external conditions. And because they are able to show two different shapes of the same structure, in this case we are talking of leaf, that characteristic is known as plasticity. So now we have seen the conditions which are essential for growth. We also understood what we mean by differentiation, de-differentiation and re-differentiation and this plasticity. And after this, from the next video, we will talk about the phytohormones, the main chemicals which are very, very essential for plant growth. So they can be growth promoters also and they are some growth inhibitors also. So now let us understand uh, plant growth regulators, the phytohormones.